Dun 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 the angry uh, pig gator monster thingy. I also need to adjust my cameras again. God dang it. God dang it. Anyway. Yeah, so we're going to continue work. I'm going to work on the flesh. And, you know, do that thing. This should be auto-adjusting. Is it auto-adjusting? No, it is not. Why not? Do you want... No? Pain in my butt. Okay, we're gonna go here. And then go like that. There we go. We'll leave it like that. So, yeah, we're continuing work on this guy. His head's not attached. I just do that for taking the pictures of the thumbnail and the work on the head is not done. I still have work to do on the leather and the cloth and all that. Got my wet palette out. We're going to continue work on that. Let's take the lid off. <clears throat> now, here's a, here's a thought. And maybe some of you out there might have an idea on this. I actually need some water. Um, when I open my wet palette, and I'm sure many of you who use your wet palettes... Um, she can get a little bit odorous as far as, um, you know, as far as how she smells. And does anybody have any ideas on, you know, basically, um, you know, taking care of said odors? I mean, I haven't touched my wet palette since uh, we were last painting so you know it's been sitting here for about I don't know a week but I was just curious does anybody have any um, thoughts tips on you know keeping the wet palette from smelling kind of musty it smells like a, an old basement kind of thing uh, you know what? I'm gonna adjust that camera too camera two <sighs> Give me a couple seconds here. I'm gonna. You're gonna go for a ride in the corner here. Uh, let's go like this and like so. Actually, let's. Can we adjust that? Um, no. Can we adjust this? Oops. Shit. Come on. And you can totally tell I was prepared for streaming today. Not really. Rarely am I ever prepared. All right. Got a drinky poo ready to go. So we're going to continue on. Uh, I was using Volpua's Pink to uh, begin shading the flesh. And uh, yeah. I think everything's running properly right we all good yeah we all good yeah we good all right oh i didn't change that oops just in case anybody pops in actually let's turn this way up just so it scares the crap out of me whenever i get alerts <laughs> all right let's get back to work so i'm gonna use up some Volpuous Pink. Throw that on my mixer. And we're just going to get right back to work. Anybody who's curious, I do have a little agitator in my bottles. I should make sure that's... Yeah. I usually hold it up to a light. Just to make sure it's, uh, you know, it's mixed. And just kind of see it like I, I hold the light up to the bottom. 
just so I can see through it. Coma! Hey, what's happening? What's happening? So yeah, we're gonna use some Volpo's Pink. I'm gonna get right back to work. I just wanna make sure my wet palette's got good contact. But yeah, I was just kind of curious. Um, you know what, Kim, uh, now that you're here, um, when painting with your wet palette, do you, do you, um, whenever you leave it for a long time, you know, like your, um, you know, for example, like this wet palette here, I was working with it last. <laughs> it's been a while. And, um, it gets a little musty smelling. It smells like a, you know, a basement, a, you know, a musty old basement. And I was just curious if there's anything you do to offset, you know, the, the buildup of, you know, the smelliness. Or do you just change your palette out, um, you know, weekly kind of thing? Usually, I've never really been bothered by the smell, but oftentimes whenever I come back to my wet palette, it's usually just like dried right up and, you know, I usually just change it all out anyway, even if I have the palette in say like this kind of state where you know it's barely been used kind of thing right now my job I use is paper towel and parchment and you know it gets me through this the session I'm usually not too worried about that but I was just curious just you know the combat the smells the smells I should use a bit of medium with that too and put a drop of contrast medium <clears throat> oh, you ha you have the sponge one. Okay. Uh, was it two or one? That's two, two. Just for giggles. So yeah, when you when you clean it out, you you clean out the whole thing and then. Right. Yeah. See, like my wet palette, I have never cleaned it. <laughs> I've been using this palette. Pfft, I don't even know. 15 years, maybe? Yeah, I was just thinking of something like, you know what I mean? Like something you could add into the water and, you know, just so it doesn't, you know, get too odorous. So I'm thinking that either it's just, you know, the water or it's becoming stagnant and, you know, blah, 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 right? But, yeah. I don't know. Just a thought. Alrighty. Let's get back to work. We working. Uh, last episode, I was working on adding these uh, these values here into like the tail and into the shadows and recesses and stuff. Now it's not really like um, a shadow shadow. It is more like just kind of you know giving the flesh its dimension, so to speak. Um, as you can see here, like. You know, there's not a lot of color variance in there. And so, for example, we will add color up into these areas, down in this crease right here, in behind the knee, on the knee itself, a little brand in here. We'll do something fun for that. Yeah. But you can see, like, this arm here, it's already got some color change going on because I thinned out. I think last time I was farting around with the color, I, I thinned it out really, really thin. I just applied it very broadly across the surface, just to, so it falls into some of the recesses, changes the overall value, you know. Because again, I mean, like the 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 what is this? Ricarth flesh it is just you know the base that we're building it on, right? And the goal is to make it look sort of like how we have the head, so. Uh, ba -dum -bum -bum. Kim, sponge gets slimy after a few days if I don't. Oof, yeah. Right, well, and, I mean, that makes sense. I mean, it's, you know. It's a sponge after all, right? Soaking up all the smells. So I'm just going to quickly lay some down. I switch to the other brush. And then just feather this out.
But that's the plan today. We're just continuing our efforts on this guy. We'll probably be working on this guy for, well, probably for a few weeks anyway. Just the, the rate at which I get my painting done. So, I have been working on some other stuff. But yeah. this color around I like letting it gather into some of these little folds and such it just looks more interesting like in there it gets a little dark and deep and dark in the creases Lay a little bit right here just like that looks a little intense at the moment oh, here we get those little hairs there let me just feather this off. Just like so. And again, the whole point of this step is just, again, to establish these, these values on the surface. This isn't the end result. This is merely just a layering process just building up values on the surface and creating uh, tonal variation on the surface of the flesh as we all know flesh has you know not one homogeneous color flesh often has especially light flesh has you know many tonal variations not really like we're establishing shadows or anything like that that's not the goal of this color for anybody who may or may not recall where we were on this figure this is not the end result of the desired scar here this is just merely to kind of establish where I want things to go Just kind of solidifying ideas and such, right? You know, let's, let's add quite a bit to the back of this knee here. I'm not too worried if I hit any like the, the higher up areas like the big folds on the leg or anything like that because I know that we're going to come in with our highlight color later and you know reestablish those high points so I'm not too concerned about that again this is just for building the the flesh up that's all this step is it's just establishing all that We just continue working our way through the beastie, the pig gator. Um, where am I? Kim waiting on the new version two of the red grass palette will ship out from the Kickstarter now in November. Okay. Kim, I am also painting an orc beast thing, the boss guy from the Dominion box. Oh, cool. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I seen your I seen your pics on the Discord. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, looking good so far. Looking good. So far. Don't ruin it, Kim. Don't don't ruin it. For 
God's sakes, man, don't ruin it. Yeah, I can see a spot over here on this side of the leg. It's missing some color. Try to get some color on there. Kind of unify that look. A little too much on the back of that knee. Oh, missed some spots over here too. Dang, we're missing all sorts of spots here. Was I in a rush last time we were working on this? don't recall oh, yeah. okay. um, Kim you're just feathering out the contrast paint after you apply it how much have you thinned it out um, I did uh, two drops I, sh I showed that just when I laid the color out, I added two drops of medium. It's on the wet palette, so the wet palette is, you know, thinning out further as we continue to go, but that's fine. And basically when I'm feathering it, I just lay the color down, kind of move it about. Um, I was using another brush to do this, but I just, my habit is just to simply rinse the brush off and then just um, take all the moisture out of the bristles as much as possible and then just kind of feather it off usually the way I like to work so I'm just trying to build up a little bit more color intensity on the toes just so it looks nice and cool We do love to ruin our paint jobs. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. So, yeah. So far, so good. I mean, I've you can see I built quite a bit of intense color here. And so I will try and emulate that on this side. So I hit this. Yeah, I was kind of doing the spikes too. Hmm. Now, I could also apply a fairly broad thinned out wash of the color just so it falls in some of these these big broader areas and get just a little bit more color variation but i don't know we'll see i'm gonna switch over to the arm i mean so far everything's going pretty good uh But yeah, with these contrasts, I mean, for the most part, I usually don't like to work too heavy on the color at first. I like to slowly build up to the desired result. It's just the way I like to do it, especially if I'm taking my time with a piece and trying to make it look nice and purdy. You know, who who doesn't who doesn't want their pieces to look nice and purdy? Purdy, I'm telling you, purdy. Not pretty. We're not looking for pretty. We're looking for purdy. You got to say it like that too, purdy. That's a little too much there. Like it looks really cool when you, especially when you have it really thinned out, because then it just falls like right into those crevices and everything like that. But Again, I don't want to, I don't like relying on the properties of the paint to achieve my particular look that I'm going for. And which is why whenever you listen to me, you know, talk about other people's paint jobs, I often encourage them not to, you know, rely on shade washes and such to get their overall effect. 
that you know you you should want to you know do it deliberately right so yeah Kim, I see that the beast also has a brand on the, his back leg. The one I'm doing also has that. I wonder if all crew boy beast has that. I don't know. Could be. I mean, it looks like it probably like it looks like kind of like the cage, and so I don't know. Maybe it's the crew boy brand. They brand all their monsters with this, which you know thematically makes sense, right? Because they cruel. So really all this is is just to change variation, get things in places and make it look interesting. That is the goal. Yeah, we'll start up here. Just a little bit of color in some of the muscle groups just to again give them a little bit more definition just a little just a little now on the interior of the hands i have been laying more of this color down again just you know make it interesting and such oh, i left that too long left a little tide mark that's okay. Again, not too worried if I if I leave little tide marks and stuff like that because um, I did that somewhere else on here, and, I, and there's a few tide marks. Oh, and maybe it was the head. I don't know how well this shows up on camera, but you can kind of see there's a few tide marks, but it actually ends up kind of looking like veins, and especially if you do it in a kind of a consistent manner. But even though veins aren't really consistent, right? They're all over the place. The little tide marks end up looking like little veins. And that's actually kind of interesting. And it's not really intentional, but, you know, it is kind of one of those happy accident kind of things where, you know, that's cool and all. And, you know, it doesn't hurt to leave it. And in fact, leaving it actually adds. And that's kind of interesting. And so, you know, when you're, when you're painting, you know, it doesn't always have to be, you know, spot on perfect. I mean, you know, again, you can always, you know, just work within your errors and incorporate them and make them part of your overall vision. It doesn't always have to be, you know, spot on perfect color blends. You know, you can, you can create some very interesting looks just by, you know, occasionally incorporating your mistakes which is you know kind of um relieving in a sense because a lot of times so many people right we put so much pressure on ourselves to make these models just look, look the absolute best that we can create and i'm recommending that you don't you don't have to it doesn't have to be this way there is another way we can paint our figures and be happy with it. It doesn't always have to be so stressful and, oh no, I didn't get this color blend just right. And, oh, it doesn't look quite right. Although I didn't take care of some of these gaps. <laughs> Oops. Oops. Oh well. Do, 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 do. I'm going to lay a little bit more heavier color on the hands though. Kind of build that up. Just because. Might have to come back at the hands once the, uh, I have the hands free of the, uh, the sticky tack. Just so I can kind of get in here better. Get a bit more adhesion of the paint. Yeah. 
But yeah, working with the color in such a thinned out fashion, yeah, it's, it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. Getting the bottom of the hand, but I think this part of the hand touches the base, so I probably don't really have to worry about it too much. Of course, we can make it, I don't know, I guess it really depends on how uh, I plan on finishing this. Like with sort of base and all that. Maybe I'll make the hand a little more intense in color. <clears throat> yeah, it would be kind of fun to deliberately uh, control tide marks and stuff like that, you know to um to really kind of lean into that veiny appearance on the flesh that'd be kind of fun i think let's get this outside of the foot toes go quiet it's because i'm concentrating don't disturb me while i'm concentrating throw me off throw me off my game um, ba -dum -bum 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 -bum. kim i tried to paint it like it was burnt into the skin oh yeah yeah i've i've demonstrated that one once or twice i think on miniatures and tutorials painting like scarred burnt scarred flesh i've done that uh, a couple times pretty sure sure somebody who's uh keeping track of what kind of crap i produce probably could tell you better than i but yeah uh, a few spots where we need more color got the top of the thigh here just a little bit more color there Sometimes I'm kind of like, ah, let's just hit it with all with color and just blah, and just go ha and just go crazy. Then I'm like, no, better not. There we go. This foot goes off right there. I want a little more color in there. It's in that shadowy point right here. Just a little bit little bit of color just a little just concentrating on muscle groups down here in the elbow uh -uh. maybe on top of this uh, forearm here so like this so too much oh no it's too much here we go. And then boom, it's gone. And all that remains is that slight shift in value. Nope, we gotta get the inside. In fact, we, we didn't even touch this last time. Oh, there's even a bit of color in there too. Got color sitting right here. Oh, it's already dried. Oh well, it's okay. <clears throat> and we'll add a little bit more. Get a little bit more intensity in there. See, so I was kind of playing with the idea that, like, his his saddle, you know, it just changes the value because the shadows, right? But also, like, you know, around his elbows and around his chains, you know what I mean? Like, make it feel like, you know, like, He's not enjoying being in chains, right? He doesn't like it. And who does? A 
the interior of the hand I'm liking it with more and saturation in the color me likey all right so next I think oh we gotta get some of this inside this belly here oops oops we're gonna take a heavy amount of color now we'll start up over here and just lay that right in really ham-fisted in there and quickly blend it up there we go let's get a little more on the other side of the little spiky things yeah just like that just like that you know what? we could probably add quite a bit of color to the belly because it's because it is the belly the belly of the beast so all I'm working with here is like a really thinned out um, value of the color just to change that overall feeling there um, ba -dum -bum 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 -bum. Kim to quit using the shade wash as a all-over wash was the first tip I picked up from you years ago when I started following you. Cool, yeah. Uh, again, it's it's one of the first things I really recommend for anybody who you know is looking to improve their painting to you know to a higher standard. Just because I see it so often that you know so many people you know they're relying on the shade wash to to get their color values and the shadow values and you know and it's it's i think it hampers you in the long run as a painter and the more you kind of rely on that little crutch if your goal is to you know really kind of wow people right if you don't care about that well then yeah i mean you know keep painting but i know there's a lot of you out there who you know want to take this kind of stuff seriously and you know excel at it and you know nothing wrong with that um for me personally that's really kind of where i was like when i started painting you know shade washes like the gw shade washes there, there was nothing like that when i was painting um everything was often typically just kind of flood the area and then you know move on to the next step and then re-establish values and uh, highlights and stuff like that is you know it's painful process and when the gw washes came on that's why so many people were like oh this is liquid talent this is talent in a bottle and it's like well i mean it kind of is and yet it is a pale solution you know in comparison kind of thing just grabbing a fairly generous amount of water on my brush and I am going to thin the remainder of this color down I'm gonna use this in a fairly broad fashion over some of these big blank areas well they're not blank I mean like there's you can see there's skin values and such but and we're gonna push the color down this way yeah so we're just gonna get into all the little nooks and crannies you can't forget about the crannies So it's a very, very thin layer. On camera, it probably looks fairly intense. I don't know how it looks on camera. Oh, that's not too bad. Um, the goal here is obviously just to change the, the base value of the skin, but also allow some of that color to fall within recesses and you know have some fun. Let it have some fun. Again, you should be having fun when you're painting. That's what the whole point of this all is, isn't it? Is to have fun. This is a hobby. We're supposed to be relaxing, enjoying ourselves, you know, not stressing out over it. You can see I'm using a big shade wash brush to apply this, which means that I'm being very, very heavy handed with it. I don't want that built up too much there. 
and all I'm looking to do is just change that overall skin value that is it and so as I move the brush around just like when we're glazing where we finish our brush stroke is where the color is going to get uh, the most intense right let's grab a little bit more so I'm grabbing some more water real heavy amount and throw that right onto the palette here you can see we've really really thinned the color way 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 down it's, it's like practically non-existent and so this again is just to change the overall skin tone we're not looking for a really intense you know magenta or anything like that it's not it's not the goal just to give us some unifying values across the flesh we don't want to pool up so anywhere you see it pooling up quickly come in and move it along it would be fun though to you know uh, try and deliberately create tide marks on some of these areas that you know we have some of this color oh, i didn't get this inside this tail part son of a beehive i did it on that side i didn't do it on this side son of a gun okay well i gotta apparently use quite a bit here i have a whole bunch of color here no i gotta use i gotta use the regular color okay we'll give this a moment to dry before i come in and hit that with some color but yeah um kim it is two or three years since you started this channel since i started the channel um i don't remember when i i started the twitch channel my youtube channel i've had since 08 07 something like that this channel i'm not sure when i started this i've had the twitch channel for a while but yeah Now, doing stuff independent, it has been about two years, yeah. Uh, evening, Chris. Jabba's left nut. Evening. On screen, yours looks really bright and pink. Mine isn't this intense, but been doing the same thing. Um, yeah, the... Well, if, you, if you've been following along and you went with Rakar Flesh for the, for the base tone of the skin... And then come in with Volpus Pink, and then just start, you know, bringing the uh, bringing the the intensity into the flesh. Yeah, I'm not sure why it wouldn't be the same. I mean, on yeah, on camera, it like it looks really kind of bright pink, like in that area, right? It looks really pink on the end of the tail. Versus in person, yeah, it doesn't look this this pink. It's in person, it's I don't know yeah it's it's not as as saturated yeah that looks like really really bright but even like my skin looks more saturated so yeah might be the way i have my camera set it just kind of bumps the saturation just so it makes a nice pretty image what was i doing oh yeah hold this pink <clears throat> Kim, yeah, okay, I started following you when you left Mini Wargaming. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, because like I have been doing this miniature painting gig tutorials, creating videos and such. I've been doing this for 10 years? 10 years. 10 years of this. Of this silliness. Can you imagine... some of this color the tricky part is going to be trying to fade that or feather that i should say and yeah we'll have to do another pass later once that dries that's okay because i think the hand needs a little bit more saturation i have quite a bit of saturation on the ends of his fingers so i, I want to duplicate that look on this guy that's a little too saturated Yeah, 
so a little bit more intense color in, in the hand. Just for giggles. Again, I'll probably have to work on the hand again once I, I get this guy onto a base. But yeah, you know what? I want a little bit more color over here. Right inside his forearm, right in this space right here. Just want a little bit more color, just like that. Feather that off. Yeah, just like that. And it's okay if you move your brush around in an odd way, like uh, almost like a stippling motion where you're kind of just like dropping the color around and leave, depositing it and let the color kind of fade out. Again, those irregularities in the flesh end up looking more natural when it, everything's all said and done. Because again, natural things do not look perfect, right? They, despite being, you know, mostly what one could call perfect. But yeah. space in here again play some more color and when doing this kind of thing for contrast paints and just kind of shifting values and stuff like that it is kind of a you know a patience game because you're slowly building up to the effect and as you gain more experience um you know doing this kind of stuff and just really kind of taking your time enjoying the process as it were um, you become way more proficient and you can actually start to see uh, when you are you know planning your next project you can see where you want to go with a project and how you want to achieve your desired end results right because you can kind of see how the color plays you know what's going to happen when you start off with a particular kind of base and you know it just makes life just a little bit less stressful just a little, not much, but a little bit. Some of these areas I really want to get intense with the color, like in like the armpits and like in the crotch. Does a pig gator have a crotch? I don't know. He does now. Want a little bit more color up there too, but yeah. He's a pig gator monster and he don't care. Yeah, we're going to go a little bit more intensity on the elbow. Just a little. A little bit more up in the elbow. Just like that. Just kind of lay it into the creases. I'm not even 100% sure if we'll even fret about this stuff when it comes to like the highlighting and such. Um, again, because it's kind of largely unseen areas. Because like once there's a base in place, base in place, a base in place, like it's going to occupy that much space. And I mean, like as you move the model around, you're not really going to see into some of these areas. So that's why I'm not too concerned about some of this placement of the of the values and again i mean like i'm painting this for fun i'm not painting this for you know a competition or display standard or you know anything like that i'm not concerned with such trivialities I was having thoughts um, earlier about the nature of painting competitions. I know it's something I I, I think about every once in a while because I know because like there's so many of you guys out there that 
you know, you feel like that that's uh, um, like a benchmark for your abilities. And, um, you know, I, I feel like that is not dangerous, but it's not entirely healthy in some regards because it ultimately will breed unhappiness because you're constantly comparing yourself and your work and your efforts to others' work. Oi, geez Louise, that scared the shit. Hello. Hello, hold on. Oh, I got myself muted. <laughs> hold on. Where the hell's my Discord? There it is. Oh, I think Hello. There we go. There we go. I'm here. Sorry, I had to unmute my my, my channel. Hey. What's happening, man? No, not much. Just had, uh, had some chicken wraps. Holy cramoy, I got your volume way up. Oh, I'm sorry. No, no, no. Don't worry. It's good. It's all good. It's all good. All right. Okay. So, yeah, I was just, I was just talking to the camera here. Um, the nature of painting competitions and basically how it, you know, it... It can be a source of anxiety and dissatisfaction with this hobby sometimes. Oh, absolutely. And, you know, it's it's kind of the expression, you know, um, comparison is the thief of joy. Yes. And I've been thinking, okay, well, wh what is a painting competition? Especially, like, in regards of, say, you know, miniature painting. What is the purpose of said miniature painting competition? And, and you know, and like this is kind of a, um, I don't know what the word is. Can't think of what the word is that I'm trying to figure out here. But anyway, it feels more like it is only to benefit the creators of these things, of these materials. So miniatures, a games day, the golden demon, it only benefits games workshop because they're the ones who take all the pretty pictures of your all the entries. They get to uh, create publications and things of that nature. And you know, and of course, a lot of times people with an artistic bend, they are often looking for validation in their work. Artists in general are always, you know, in that camp. They're always looking for validation for their work. And why is that? Why, why is it that artists are always looking for validation from their, from their efforts? And I, I mean, like, that's artists aren't alone in that regards. I mean, many people, you know, look for validation in their in their efforts, but it often feels unhealthy. Yeah. And you know, I I'm not sure why that is a thing. Like, what is what is the point of it all? I guess is what I'm trying to drive at. Oh, these are some deep, deep questions. <laughs> well, come on, man. I'm I'm always deep, <laughs> and I'm not, and I'm not even high. I haven't I haven't touched anything today. And I mean, these are the kind of things that just pop into my head, and I start wondering, and I start raging against the machine. And oh. you know, yeah, but that's the kind of guy I am. Well, I don't think I am uh, qualified to speak about why humans need validation. Yeah. But I'll just say stupid shit that doesn't make sense. Well, but I mean, like, you can have an opinion. You're a human, so you can have an opinion. You know, whether or not the opinion, you know, is shaped in 
observation or just speculation is a different story but yeah I mean you you can have an opinion and some people might agree with you some people might disagree with you and that's all right but yeah I don't know in yeah. in, in my experience in the art world yeah it always seems like everybody's always just look at me look at me look at me and sometimes the, these these people have very very little to offer outside of of these uh, apparent artistic endeavors you know I don't know it, it just seems like it, it's always really really vapid um, people who seek the adulation of, of others I'm not... so the vapidness I would think is from insecurity because as you said they're comparing themselves to what they see as their peers yeah so they want the validation because they want to be as good if not better than what they see I don't know yeah I, I can see that and it does make a bit of sense in that's in that regard you know like so many people just look at me look how great i am and you know it's not like this is a a new occurrence it's been the kind of thing that's happened you know been happening for many many years you know art community is one where we really see it and i see it in miniature painting a lot you know look at me and i mean like you know, i'm i'm guilty of it myself at times i'm not saying that i'm above all this i'm not thinking that i'm I'm better than anybody or anything like that. But I am fairly self-conscious about, you know, what I'm doing, how I'm projecting uh, my own image, as it were, especially being, you know, in, in a public eye kind of thing. And so it's just, you know, just things I think about. I think the uh, public eye thing puts... Uh puts a whole other dimension to it. What was that? The public eye thing puts a whole other dimension to it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, props to you for managing that. <laughs> oh, I don't know if I've managed I, it. Well, to some degree, you, you're probably managing it. Yeah. I would uh, not be... Like I um I have problems putting paint jobs on Instagram, which is where which is why I have an Instagram, so that people can see what I'm doing, and if they wanted to hire someone to paint stuff. Right. Right. Like so. so like from a commercial standpoint. It makes sense to put yourself out there like that. And, you know, like when you go to like one of these um, painting competitions, if your end goal is, you know, obviously to get your name out there so that people will go, oh, yeah, look at this guy. He can paint really well. And I can't paint for crap, so I'm going to hire this guy. I get it. I don't, I don't really know what my goal was. I was just, <laughs> just putting it out there and see what happens. And uh, nothing has happened, and that's okay. Well, it's... It, it is in part on you, you know. Yes. To promote, Absolutely. Yeah, to promote yourself. Because, again, some people think, well, I'm so-and-so, and I've won such-and-such -such awards... I shouldn't have to promote myself. Everybody should be talking about how great I am, right? And I see that as well. Oop, forgot to feather that. Oh, well. <laughs> Again, uh, I was talking earlier, um, as I'm working in thin layers, you kind of end up with tide marks. And... 
it actually kind of adds to some of the look because the tide marks look like little veins and such. I don't know how well, you know what, here, let's, let's try. Let's see if I can focus in on this here. Where's my, where's my thing here? Here it is, my thing. Let me find my thing. Let's change the focus. I'm trying to do this with my hand here. So yeah, I got little tide marks occurring underneath this forearm. And you can kind of see it on the camera here. Switch the focus here. Nope. Yeah. Oh yeah, they are visible. But I was kind of having fun with it because I was like, it almost looks like veins. Even though it's it's unintentional tide marking, but it almost looks like veins on the flesh. And so I was speculating, like, could one master tide marks to you know achieve this desired end result make this deliberate I mean, you probably could well sure yeah ain't gonna be me i ain't gonna do it today <laughs> but one could <laughs> if one was so inclined this is interesting Again, just it reminds me of that bi bicentennial man uh, movie with Robin Williams, when he's a robot and refers to himself as one. No, too too far out. <laughs> I I don't really remember that movie. I don't know why I do. It used to come around in Christmas time. Maybe that, yeah, we're we're closing in on Christmas. That's why. <laughs> Right. I don't know. Just I'm reaching. So I had a friend over today, and uh, he 3D prints. Ooh. And uh, I um, sort of talked him into trying painting. Oh, cool. And for his first paint job, it's really good. Well, that's good. Yeah. And it was all under your tutelage? What? No, I just gave him, like, um, not tutelage, more like a guidance. Well, okay, yeah. Like, if, if this, then that, and he figured out the rest himself. <laughs> I gotcha. That's cool. So you you suckered him in. I think I have. <laughs> so all he has to do now is buy paints and he can just 3D print all our D&D &D miniatures and start painting them so I don't have to it's <laughs> oh so it's it's not it, it, it is kind of a suckering but it's more like he's been duped he's he's been all other things no I'm really <laughs> I, I really hope he finds uh, uh, he finds uh, fun in painting So he was tripped into all this. He was press ganged. Yeah, by gang being me. <laughs> Single gang. Yeah. That's funny. That's cool, though. Yeah. Now, uh, how, how good a friend a... is he? Hey? How good a friend is he? Well, uh, getting pretty close. I've only met him not so long ago oh i was just wondering because you know when you see him on the streets and he's homeless you know and he's out there selling his ass to um, afford a new model oh no he's a carpenter he's good <laughs> he's, he's fine. He I, 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 I was just wondering if you were going to take responsibility because he's out there you know sucking dick for models or something no <laughs> not not for that <laughs> I know. I was just, I was just making a bad joke. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna use a hair dryer here. I don't want to speed this hand up a bit. <laughs> Kim, you're not high. What just happened? Yeah, I, I work in the day, man, and then you know, I chill out in the evening. I don't, uh, 
I don't wake up and, you know, spark up or anything like that. I don't know how people do that. Yeah, I was going to say before you went on with the hair dryer that um, every joke needs a serious side, <laughs> or else it's not funny. <laughs> True. And I, I, I was playing the role of the serious side. Gotcha. You were playing the straight man. Yeah. Gotcha. focus here uh, I am kind of focus focus let's go that yeah that's better for everybody following along at home all right what the hell did I do last time with the head did I I started laying the brighter flesh tone down first right then it came in with the blue. Is that what I yes. did? Yeah, I can't remember. Because, yeah, the end goal is to get the, the head flesh like this, right? Or, no, sorry, get the body flesh like the head flesh. Yeah, that's what I meant to say. I know what I'm doing. Believe it or not. Sometimes. I believe you did the uh, blue. Yeah, I did the blue. Almost ad lib. Yeah. And just figure out that yeah, after you've done the, uh, yeah, to not make it look like a boiled pig. <laughs> Was that a word? <laughs> yeah. Well, because yeah, because like right now he looks, he's definitely very piggish, right? It looks like pig skin. Or pig gator, I suppose. But yeah, so I think we're gonna start off by. Taking some Ricard flesh. Where's my Ricard flesh? There it is. Take some Ricard flesh and some Pallid Witch flesh. I'm pretty sure that's what we used. I'm going to make a 50 50 mix of this on the palette. The company I bought this uh, Vortex mixer from, that's what I used to mix my paints. They actually sent me a, a thing in the mail with like an offer for more of this shit. I'm like, I already got the mixer. The fuck else would I want? So we, are, we enjoy your service, or your patronage, or whatever the fuck they call it. I, I, I got the mixer, that's all I wanted was the mixer. And no, I don't want a, you know, centrifugal freaking, you know, plasma separator, or, you know, something like that. Like I, that's my separator. Yeah, you, you know, know what one I mean? of those. Uh, yeah, those uh, centrifuge for blood work. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like I don't want that shit because that's what this vortex mixer is, right? This is all lab equipment, and yeah, I'm like, no, I. But like, if this is lab equipment, why does it have this really kick-ass little LED light to it? Everything's better with LEDs. I guess I don't have it. You ever seen the mixer I have? See the uh, the one with the silicone. Uh... The nipple, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's got. Well, it's, 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 it's a silicone. Yeah, here. This is the this is it right here. 
Hold on, let me get it. Let me get it into the shot here. Just in case anybody out there too is wondering what the hell I use. Yeah, that, that one. Yeah. So I picked this up, you know, off Amazon. It's, it's dirty as balls now, but you know, it's just a little simple USB. It's got a USB and a power, right? It's got an on off, right? It is just laboratory equipment. This thing's like probably a pound or two in weight. But yeah, when you when you act well, actually I don't know if I want to leave it on the table while I make it go. Actually, let's see. Let's see if the cameras just shake their brains out. Oh, that's not too bad. But anyway, you can kind of see there. There's, it's glowing around a ring. Oh fuck! Let's turn. Let's turn the fucking light off now. There we go. There we go. So you can see. The audio is cutting out, or is it just me? Uh, might be me. I don't know. Probably because I've put my vortex mixer up on my table but anyway yeah this is a this is what i use it's really it's really fun oh yeah that's that's good stuff right there anyway. there's the pressing question have you ever put your willy on it <laughs> i'm not answering that no we don't have to <laughs> we can all just you know. <laughs> I I'm not answering it because I don't want people to judge me. <laughs> uh, all right. Uh, job is left not. I haven't given mine head yet. Just working on the body. Oh, okay. Giving it head. Kim. They did not catch that is uh, that it was for painting and not lab work. Yeah, exactly, right? They they figured I was some sort of lab or something, and they just, you want more equipment? I'm like, no, I'm a painter. I only wanted to shake my paints because I'm lazy. <laughs> and I have, like, I have, like, Mr. Burns' hands and grip. I'm not strong anymore. All of them has the silicone nipples. I got the one from Artist Opus. I hear also it's not Chris. Oh, okay. Hail Boop. Hey yo. Hey yo. Hail. Mr. Boop. Boopity Boop. <laughs> All right. So we shook up our paint. Let's slap it onto our palette. I'm going to go for a one to one type of mix ratio for this color I'm pretty sure that's what I did right when I was glazing this up pretty sure could be wrong probably am wrong do 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 Oh, you know what we need? A little bit of medium. Just a little. A little lamian. And, yeah, you can see here how the lamian medium is kind of collecting at the base. That's why it's always good to give it a shake. Oh, yeah. There we go. Yeah, see, now, it's, now the bottom's all nice and clear. Anyway. Now, when one is working in lots of um, color mixtures and such, if you have a fairly consistent method for gathering your paint and applying it to your palette and, you know, getting your mixtures, you should get consistent results. People, whenever they have a hard time, you know, mixing paints and then co color matching and stuff like that, yeah, it's it can be a pain. I think I want a little... No, it should be okay. I was going to say, maybe I want a little bit more... More carved flesh, but I think it's okay. I'm going to switch over to my my brush for I use for glazing. It's an old Citadel Heavy Metal standard brush. It's got a nice long bristle length to it. Bristles. Jabba, 
I was scratching my nuts then. What was the second color? Uh, oh, for the flesh? Same thing. I'm pretty sure we did this for the head. I used Ricard Flesh and Pallid Witch Flesh. One to one. Or mostly one to one. <laughs> I know I always end up throwing those ratios out there and shit, but yeah. So for larger areas, such as this, I am going to continue with our feathering process. So I'm going to... I probably don't even need this brush really for the moment. I'm not going to really worry about like the flesh has this uh, cross hatching uh, texture to it. You know, it's kind of like scales, like you know, you can imagine like a gator or whatever. Uh, I'm not really going to worry about um, that. I'm just going to lay some color down because this is the first initial transition of color, and this is also going to push some of that pink uh, downwards. We're just going to establish some of the high points. Right? We're going to build up some of the color brightness. So I'm going to use this brush here. Now, again, I've added two drops of medium to this. And uh, where do I want this? I want this here and here. And I'm going to quickly feather it off. Just like so. Because the color is an opacity, it sits on top and will, you know, mostly cover over um, the uh, previous like transitions of color there. Around here, just like that. I actually kind of like how that looks. We could glaze the transitions in and just build up the layers and layers of highlights. Could do that. I don't think I really want to spend that much time doing that. I'm going to add a little more water to this though. So, something like that. Wait, fuck. I'm going to use a damp brush and just feather off the color. A little bit more here, just like that. Oh, I think, I think barking left me. No, he didn't. He's back. What happened? You don't say. <laughs> Might be having troubles. going on buddy discord was being a little twat gotcha i think it's sorted did you just hear a lot of blinky blue piece <laughs> yeah oh yeah sorry oh god yeah it didn't want to let me disconnect at first it's like no Issues? Yeah, it sounds like he's got issues. Okay. <laughs> well, let me tell you about them. No. All right, we're adding a bit of water here. We're taking this glaze highlight color way down. See, the problem with a really highly textured surface like this, it's not a problem, but <laughs> the challenge of it is, especially when you're glazing, the very thin color will fall into the recesses. 
and I'm not looking for that. And so it's actually more like an overbrushing that I want to occur. So it actually, if I, if I thin the color too far, then I lose a lot of the control, but I, in some of these big, broader areas, I do want to have that, you know, ability to create that transition. For example, like on the hand here, the hand doesn't have a lot of texture in it, so we can pretty much just go bring the color up around this area. We're, all we're looking to do is catch just the high points. That is it. Push some of these between values down a bit, especially anywhere where we didn't really get the desired end result of the feathering when we we're thinning out the color. Another way we could have went about all of this as well could have been um, using a retardant and basically just blend all the colors at the same time. Well, probably I would have gone with Ricarth and this Volpo's Pink and then wet blended them all, but I wasn't 100% sure and how, where and how I was going about all this. You know, I'm just kind of flying by the seat of my pants as it were some areas it's kind of fun to follow the, the texture so you may or may not notice that I'm pushing the color to where I want it to get brighter so I'll start the brush stroke off closer into the mid area and then push it towards where I'm getting brighter. Just like that. But other areas where like on top of the fold, like in here and here, maybe around a couple of these areas, I'll go back, actually I switch brushes, go to this brush, grab some of the thicker paint. It's still pretty thin, but that's fine because all we're going to do is we're going to come in here and be very deliberate just like right here and we're just going to put that color right in there another thought I had while I was doing this as well was uh, using the brush stroke to create the texture that was another idea I had so basically just use paint in a much thicker consistency and just kind of just follow the, the lay of the land as it were. Which in hindsight I'm thinking we might actually do now. Just to make it really really highly textured. Maybe. Just me. Mm -hmm. Painting all these little folds and such, I'm trying to be very deliberate can be kind of time consuming. Really the focus should be just on bringing that texture forward.
Sounds like barfing dipped on me again. Zoldark. Discord is acting up. Bad Discord. Interesting. Yeah. Bad Discord. Bad. Smell bad. <laughs> Anybody can tell me who, what movie that's from. Smell bad. You get a cookie if you win. Yeah, I think I'm going to stick with the paint in a th slightly thicker consistency rather than glazing out these highlights. I'm going to stick with it in a slightly thicker consistency. That way I can just basically fudge the texture. It's going to take a little bit, but I think it's easier than trying to you know struggle with trying to follow the the lay of the land of the of the flesh here. Yeah. Well, so we can make Why are we getting What'd you do? I don't know. I'm also thinking that I'm missing a few servers that I know I was not kicked from. So something is up. There's something fishy going on. <coughs> Somebody spying on you? No, I hope not. <laughs> no. I am... Uh, I am terrified of the internet, so... <laughs> There's a weird thing. I rejoined the server that's not there anymore, but it does not show up in the list of servers once I've joined. I don't know what to tell you. Yeah. Well. is weird.
Yeah, I think on the broader surfaces, I think making up the texture on the hand and everything like that is a little bit better. Kind of matches with the the overall look of the flesh. Still there? I'm still here. Oh, okay. <laughs> I don't know. You, you, oh, you, you never know. Yeah, you clunked out a couple times on me, so I was just, was just checking. Yeah, yeah, understandable. I think I have displeased the machine spirit. That's entirely possible. Bloody machine spirit. Seems to be holding up okay for now. Now, the thing I wanted to avoid, I'm doing. <laughs> I'm getting overly nitpicky about details. <laughs> I'm very familiar. Yeah. For some strange reason, I got caught up in the hand and doing the texture on the hand. <laughs> it's just a very interesting looking hand. I don't know. I think it's these big, freaking long ass fingernails. I don't know. Uh, the come hither nails. <laughs> yeah, I yeah, I don't I don't know if these are come hither, but <laughs> <laughs> come hither child. Job is left on. I watched the film the other day. Is uh is it Labyrinth? I think Ludo says it. Exactly, Jabba. You win. You win the cookie. You won the oh. last cookie. Kim, they probably use a stupid criminal for the brain parts out in that machine. That's why the spirit is acting up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, what happens, like, in, in Warhammer 40,000, you know, they, like, all the servitors, everything like that, like, all the, like, everything that's kind of automated tasks, it is, you know, servitors, which are just basically, you know, um, dead humans, right? So, what happens to, like, the criminals and stuff? Like, are they turned into servo skulls? Is that what it is? They get turned into servo skulls? Yeah, I think so. They're like the lowest of the low. Oh, I am doing it again. Frick. I didn't mean to start getting all freaking stupid about these highlights and such. It's just such an interesting texture. Who knew pig gators was my thing? Who knew I was all about pig gators? But yeah, Jabba, it was Ludo. Smell bad.
know you couldn't hear it from my end, but we just had a synchronized brush clean. <laughs> it was really weird. Why is it weird? Well, because I was cleaning my brush and I heard not the sound that I'm used to. <laughs> do you not clean your brush aggressively? I do. Oh. <laughs> just you have a big jar and I have a mug. Well, you know, I'm compensating. Like, that's, Ooh, that's not what small mugs. That's not the sound they make. <laughs> yeah, I'm overcompensating. Um because of my uh, small penis. So I have to have large rinsing jars. Just saying. And now you know something about me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I feel close. <laughs> <laughs> There's a small resin thing on this uh, 3D printed model that I'm I'm not sure if it's a part of him or if it's just support. That's very annoying. Jobs left nut. It was the way you said it that gave it away. <laughs> well, I didn't want to make it too hard for you, buddy. Kim, they turned in uh, all different servos, not skulls, though, since they need the brain power for those. It's a bunch about the Augusto Verdorov book, The Bloodlines. Servos that were sick murderers that are easy to program to kill after their servos and about what happens when they're still in a bit of the soul left from the former life. <laughs> what book is that, uh, Kim? Oh, excuse me. <laughs> Java, I'm glad I'm watching tonight for this special bonding moment between you and barfing. <laughs> That's what we're here for. <laughs> yeah. That's what the show is all about. It's all about connecting, making bonds. With paint as well. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> God, I didn't. I don't know why I did a Formula One thing there. Is, is that what that is, though? Yeah, we we race as one or something. I am both uh, absolutely fanatic and uh, n not knowledge knowledgeable at all. In formula? I, yeah, in formula, yeah, in F1. I am uh, the F1 paradox. One of the things where my friends look at me and go, huh? I have no fucking idea. But yeah, yeah no, me either. Same. <laughs> We're the same. I don't know. But how many of your, your pals are willing to admit of having a small penis? Uh, most of them. <laughs> <laughs> You know what? No, none of them, Chris. None. <laughs> Everybody's watching tonight is like, what the fuck is this guy on? <laughs> All right. Staring blankly into the wall thinking, what am I doing with my life? <laughs> yeah. Where did it all go wrong?
Kim, Bloodlines, a Augusto Zerdorov book. It's a Warhammer crime book. Amazing book by Chris Wright. Huh. I may have to check that out. <clears throat> Sorry, I messed up. The book with the servos are another Warhammer crime book called um, book that's called Flesh and Steel by Guy Harley. Oh, okay. <clears throat> you almost led me astray, Kim. Good job. I'd like uh, like a 40k noir series. Well, isn't that what the, some of the new crime books are about? Like it's a, it's a noir? She came in, she was just legs, and it's just a pair of legs. <laughs> oh, like that kind of noir. <laughs> <laughs> I've been in art vacation is I have mine for so long. I mind, I'm in Hive City. Uh oh, Gene Steelers. <clears throat> I mean, like, Warhammer 40,000 is a good environment for that kind of storytelling. I think. Yeah. I mean, I could be wrong, but. Yeah, it feels like the appropriate place for that kind of, you know, craziness. Kim, I've done them all so far. All the crime noir, yeah? That's cool. Oops, messed that up. Smash that one up. Oh, well. Give that a second to dry and we'll hit it again. We'll do it again. I do want a bit more color or brightness. Right around here. See, unfortunately, with the feathering, I'm pushing color into the recesses. I mean, I to get rid of that, I probably could just go over it another with another shade wash or um, contrast or whatever. But yeah, I mean, it doesn't look horrible on camera. It looks okay, but. I guess it's not too bad. Now comes the great question. How shall I shade this blue little boy? 
What? I'm painting a, uh, I'm painting the D&D minis for my D&D group. Oh, gotcha. So I've got a blue little dragonborn, and he's all uh, base coated up, and I'm not sure now I'm going to uh, shade it, shade it blue, because there are so many options. <laughs> what is what is the surface that you're painting? Like, what is it representing? Is it cloth, marmor, what? It's a scaly skin. But dragon what? scales. Yeah. Um, he said it's a blue. What kind of blue? I went for uh, Calador Sky. Shade like it. Like a really and, blue. And you're looking to shade it? Yes. Use something like uh, dark, dark, dark green. Like uh, Caliban green. Ooh. Oh, yeah. And if that's not dark enough, just add a drop of black to it. Thin it way down and then try it like that. So Something mean, different. Caliban green. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. The, uh... yeah. It's a really, really dark, dark, dark green. Oh yeah. So just make that into a shade. Uh, essentially, yeah. Well, like could, a thing. Yeah. So that it it is cool. It'll push the the blue f right out of like a stark blue, and then yeah. because it's a scale, it'll give you that slight hint of greens that you can you know say, well, it's it's a lizard duder and you know. His skin is got greens. That way, it just doesn't feel like you know, just blue was thrown on it, right? That's yeah, cool. That's a good idea. I also had uh, a thought of purple. Yeah, purple's another good one. Could totally do it, purple. That's just because I'm a fan of purple, really. Sure. Purple's a good color. Mm. Now, mind you, yeah. purple mm. apparently doesn't exist. Yes, that is exactly why it's my favorite color. <laughs> yeah. It's your favorite because we can't, we technically don't see it. Yes. Gotcha. Also, it, it looks fantastic. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, once I learned the whole thing about purple isn't real, I was all for it. Even more. But what if I made a shade out of Stegodon's scale green? Because that one is always funky. Yep. Stegodon Stale Green is a good one. Stale Green. Stegodon Scale Green. Yeah. Um, that one I really enjoy uh, when I'm highlighting black. Because yeah. That one is kind of like my final color uh, through the progression of going through black and then Incubi Darkness and then Stegodon Scale Green is like just the very bright points. If I want to stay with a really, really dark black color. There, there's going to be like a patch of uh, a yellowish, uh, yellowish, uh, we call it flesh color on his tummy. Yeah, that'll work. I don't really know. I'll have to look up, look up some images. You yeah, want it, go. does it have to be like a pure yellow or can it be like an off yellow? And it's supposed to be like an off yellow, like uh, oh, what's it called? Um, uh, like flayed one flesh, just a tad more yellow. Mm, okay, so probably closer to like Ushabti bone then. Ushabti bone's yeah. got like, quite a bit of yellow tone to it, and that'll look pretty cool with the blue and the slight green hue shift. That'll look really cool because then you're you're playing within subtleties, right? And when playing within subtleties of color, it's a lot of fun. Because you initially first see something, but then you, as you further inspect, you know, more and more things become 
visible to the eye and you're like oh wow he did this and he went there with that color and that's when people get all artsy about these things very true I am frickin' doing it again. Frickin' following the, the texture and you know, when you're catching those highlights and everything's just flowing just right. You get lost in those little moments and you're like, I'm painting. <laughs> in my best Ralph Wiggum voice that I can muster. I, I really enjoy miniature painting, but it's this kind of stuff that I'm like, oh, I don't want to freaking spend a whole great deal of time, you know, you know, really kind of finessing a lot of these transitions, especially if it's not something that I'm, you know, super concerned about, you know, it's... It's not like I'm painting this for, like, a competition or anything like that. It's just... Oh, and we've gone full circle. Hi. Hi. What's up? Hi. See my monster? Uh, the miniature? I was already talking about my small penis earlier, so you don't have to embarrass me further. No, oh, not really. Talks every day. So basically, yeah, just throwing these highlights on. Essentially, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the flesh kind of like, I'll show you, like this guy's head right here. Like that. So that's how his flesh is going to look. Oh, very good. Yeah, this is some sort like of... a dead pig. Almost like, yeah, almost like a dead pig gator. That's what this thing is. I don't know. It's, it's some sort of crazy ass monster. <laughs> Walked into there this morning and John goes, Is that a Cobra Kai shirt? I said, Yeah. He goes, Dope. <laughs> <laughs> Dope. All right. Where was I? All right. Oh, I got a big old doggy here. There's a bunch of little scales on his on his knee. And right now I just realized I am spending entirely too much time on it. Still there, Barfin? I am. Oh, okay. You were quiet. I thought maybe you, you had yeah. disappeared on me again. Well, you know, if, if I disappear, I will uh, let you know. How are you going to let me know when you disappear? Yeah. I'll say Shazam. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm really concentrating on this stupid yellow belly thing. <laughs> Which is totally unnecessary, but by Jove, I am going to do it. <laughs> uh, yeah, Kim, that was the, that was the wife. Yep, yeah. she just got home from work.
I tried a new theme today, which was very daring because I'm pretty conservative in my painting of uh, and trying new things. Um, the whole thing where you just take typhus corrosion and go to town and then make it all rusty. Oh yeah, okay. <laughs> if that makes any sense at yep. all. Yep. Um, you put the typhus corrosion down and then you give it a slight dry brush to bring out the rust, right? Yeah. Yeah. And I uh, like lightly dry brush it with uh, some sort of metal. Yeah. Very effective. I, uh, I did break the model, though. <laughs> I lost it on the floor and stepped on it. Oh, I was going to say. Um, did you? Were you dry brushing too hard, but... Yeah, no. I have been, uh, I've been stalking your videos for so long that I know not to dry brush too hard. Yeah. Yeah, if you feel it moving in your hand, you're going too hard. Actually, I said that exact same thing to uh, my new friend, or my new painting buddy. You were quoted today, Chris. <laughs> Yeah, I, th I thought my ears were burning. <laughs> I'm looking for glue. I have my big dilemma. Uh, this resin does not take very kindly to plastic glue. No. You had the 3D printed have... resin? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Just super glue, I found, is the only thing that's really effective for it. Well, apparently I'm all I'm fresh out of super glue. Yeah. Or technically cyanoacrylate. If anybody out there is like, ah, oh, well, technically, Chris, it's super glue is the brand name. Actually. <laughs> Technically, I hear that one. Yeah, that from, I hear that one from my daughter a lot. Well, that dad technically, no, like fuck off with the technically. Yes, I, I am the kind of father who tells his daughter to fuck off. I found half of a Terminator. No glue. You know, I'm finding bits that I have no idea what is. What are? I, I know grammar. <laughs> what was? What was? What be? To be? It's a long time since I've have a, had a deep dive in my drawers. <laughs> oh, I'm finding Necrons from 1995. Just That's a lie. 97. It's just funny, <laughs> funny how you said that. Deep dive in my drawers. Who's that? Yeah. Oh, it's somebody on YouTube. Dennis. Shit, I'm not on YouTube, am I? God damn it. What's Jack. I always make that mistake. <laughs> now, if I was on YouTube, I think uh, we'd be getting harassed a little bit more. <laughs> I think this spot, I want to blend it. Yeah, I think I'm do a quick little feathering right there. Currently not live on YouTube. No? Okay, good. I thought I made that that rookie mistake again. Oh, jeez Louise. I can't ha seem to hang on to my brush. It keeps spinning out of my hands. 
I found the uh, ruler of a girl I used to date like eight years ago. This is interesting. How and I would be in my drawers. <laughs> yeah, that sounds like a come on line. I will remember that. I'll see if it works and I'll tell you. <laughs> well, I can tell you right now it doesn't. <laughs> Maybe if you find the right girl. Yeah. Like a woman that's to that's absolutely just stationary and shit like that. Come <laughs> see my drawers. <laughs> They're out there. They are out there. The stationary lovers. <laughs> Give her a nice uh, calligraphy pen, and maybe maybe you're in for a blow. Who knows? <laughs> maybe. Now then, the question becomes: Which way to highlight this? Do we highlight? No, this highlights fairly central. I was thinking of doing it this way, or bring it up. No, I think we'll pretend like light sourcing. Yeah, we'll highlight. We'll highlight according to light sourcing. Or maybe we won't. <laughs> no, we'll do it right here. Right there. Hit it again. I think we're not moving too badly on this on this skin. Yeah, yeah. All things considered. Considering I keep fretting over a little nitpicky type of details. Something I usually try not to do too much. Just because it slows down my effort and... Like I'm not looking to spend a great deal of time on this guy. Well, there is less oil, more swamp. <laughs> We're heading for gold. Yeah, some fucking comedy gold going on here. A reference why European brain doesn't understand. <laughs> what comedy gold? No, the, the, I didn't know if it was a reference. Oh. <laughs>
Jabba's left nut. My son's favorite was saying, actually. <laughs> My response was similar to yours. Actually, fuck off. <laughs> and his other was, do you know what I mean when I say my response? Your badly educated 14-year-old, I've forgotten more than you'll ever know. I know what you mean all the time. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. I mean, like, you know, kids like to think they're really freaking smart. And sometimes they are. Cool smart asses, but, you know, they like to think they're really clever. Uh, one of my, an expression that it makes sense to me more and more every day is youth is wasted on the young. It's kind of mean, but it is at. think I have a say in this. <laughs> why, why wouldn't you have a say? I don't know. I'm, I'm like in, I'm in the be between area at the moment. Between what? Well, I'm 30, so it's like, mm, it's, mm. is it wasted on me yet, Bill? <laughs> 30? Oh, dude, you're already halfway to the grave. What are you talking about? <laughs> well, I plan to either have an early grave or just live eternally. <laughs> those, those, those apparently are the two options, right? <laughs> either yeah. I'm going to die early or I'm living forever. One of the two. I've decided. Sometimes um, when I'm feeling the most ragey, I'm saying ragey, like rage, uh, I often feel like I think I've lived too long. <laughs> Does it also take years off you when yeah. you feel this rage? Yeah, most likely. This skin is just too much fun. This, I'm yeah, not, you know what? This, skin, this, this, everything's paint. Yeah, like this. This much fun should be illegal. This much fun might get me put on a watch list. Because, like, as I'm laying this down. And I'm thinking, okay, well, here, I'll push this value here. I'll get brighter here. I'll push this darker. You know, we'll get these nice little spots of shadow and indentation and stuff like that. And, you know, getting all kind of, um, you know, highbrow about it all. And then I remember, oh, right, it's a pig gator I'm painting. <laughs> Let's get a grip. We're painting a pig gator. <laughs> Calm the fuck down. You're painting a pig gator. But yeah. It's just um, this texture. Like, there's so many different ways one can go about, um, you know, painting it. Because you could just base coat it, shade wash it, and then even just dry brush it. And you could really get some really interesting texture out of it. Or you could go in and deliberately try and catch all the little segments of the flesh and, you know, uh, render them, you know, individually and, you know, really kind of give them that treatment. And again, like there's all sorts of ways you can go about this and it's 
really really fun and now i'm seeing like some of the seam lines and stuff like that like the gaps that i missed when i was assembling it um and it's annoying the piss out of me <laughs> oops yeah i'm thinking that i might i don't know i might try and do some gap filling on him because there's also another seam back here and behind his up by his bum and yeah time we at holy cremolis we're nine minutes ot geez i'm just i'm just into my painting here and <laughs> into the pig gator yeah into the pig gator and yeah i'm having fun again this is i'm glad i, I decided to pick this guy to do because yeah he is a lot of fun and it's just such an interesting model and it's it, like again I'm, I'm sure everybody's sick and tired of me talking about this but age of sigmar models the sculpting on these models hands down the best effort out of games workshop in my opinion i actually agree yeah like th th there's there's somebody on the design team here with these figures somebody's operating on another level and everybody probably looks at that person going he this guy this this man or woman is insane and i i don't see you know what i mean like it's probably the kind of person that they're talking to that they don't fully understand what they're talking about until you see the end result and it's like oh i see what you were going for there and well you know what i mean like yeah someone deserves a really big cookie yeah yeah i i concur <coughs> i concur because yeah i've just been enjoying this this pig gator thing yeah i see some of that uh good old age of sigmar goodiness it's been trickling over to 40k recently with the new orcs yes yeah with those new squigs i really like that big the boss on that uh, great white squig he's really cool that one's really really fun I concur. Uh, Kim, don't know what happened there, but you cut out for a bit. Anyone else having issues with Twitch? Uh, could be Twitch. Could be me. Could be many things. No, I didn't see any alerts pop up, but it doesn't mean that I wasn't lagging or anything like that. Plus, too, I, I think uh, my kids are currently playing video games, so. Yeah. Both and kids on them video games. Yeah, yeah. Kim, it's a great skin on the new Orc Boss. I painted the skin of the Boss Beast from Dominion yesterday. It was so much fun to do. Yes, I, I saw that on the Discord. Yeah, I have no idea, honestly, because I'm like, I'm thinking only of this figure and, you know, color schemes. And I've gone for an albino type of creature here. And I have no idea how to go about painting the flesh of, you know, the, uh, the Boss. I honestly have no idea what I want to do for it. I don't want to go dark or anything like that. And in fact, I want to have him kind of separate, but part of him, right? Like a reflection of the gator pig. Yeah, I, I, like, but I don't know if I want to go with like an albino orc or, you know, something along those lines. Like, I don't know. I mean, it'll be a little while before we get there. So we got some time to think about it. And of course, if you're watching this after the fact, uh, feel free to comment down below what you think I should do with the orc. Just to kind of get the juices flowing and get some ideas moving. But otherwise, that is it for this session. Uh, I want to thank Barfing Sheep and everybody uh, for joining me today. And, uh, you know, getting our projects done, having a little chit chat. And any uh, parting words of wisdom from you, Barfing? Man who can tell you the size of his penis is a true friend. <laughs> well, there we go. There, there you have it. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> I, is, is a true friend, but a real friend would ask you to examine it and, like, you know, is it shaped the wrong way? Should it, you know what do these bumps mean you know what i mean like a real friend is like gets in there and helps them out like oh no dude you got to get that checked out that's that's all fucked up 
<laughs> okay. I'm getting the hell out of here. I want to thank you guys. I'll see you. <laughs> Kim, shave your nuts. Yeah, help you shave your nuts. Your true friend will help you shave your nuts. Exactly. That's exactly yeah, it. Yeah, that's, that's, the, that's the word of the day. <laughs> Java, this is going to OnlyFans. <laughs> I do have the OnlyFans. Uh, f- feel free to look me up on the OnlyFans. <laughs> no, don't. <laughs> dun 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 dun